In the previous video, we discussed a debiasing technique. We had a gender direction that was correlating with professions that we weren't happy with. So what we did is we came up with this technique where we were able to demonstrate that before there would be some correlations in our embeddings, but after debiasing using a linear algebra technique, we noticed that these correlations were now a thing of the past or at least lessened. And we concluded by mentioning that this is a cool idea, but that it might not be enough as far as properly debiasing gender from word embeddings goes. In this video, I would like to explain what I mean by that. And I'll be doing a couple of experiments with these embeddings to prove that we shouldn't be overly optimistic. So what I've got here is I have a list of words. These are the I believe top 10,000 words in the English language. What I've also got is I've gotten some professions. It's another word list that I found. I've also found a word list for gendered words. And I also have the word lists that I had before that I had in the visualization. And what I'm doing here effectively is I'm taking all of these words such that I have this one giant list of all sorts of words. And what I then do is I generate a embedding set and I'm also generating a debiased set of embeddings where I'm projecting away from the man, woman, he, she average axis. And the question now is, can we have a look around at how these two embeddings over here are different? So what I have done is I have made two different charts. I'm applying UMAP, which is a dimensionality reduction technique that's nonlinear. So it's like, principal component analysis, but just slightly different. And what that allows me to do is get an impression of how these words are clustered before and after debiasing. And you'll notice that I've added a color. The blue dots represent words from the gendered set and the orange dots represent words from the non-gendered set. Now, if I were to compare this plot with this one, then to me at least, it feels like they're still really similar. It might be that there's been a slight rotation and that we've maybe mirrored a couple of these clusters, but by and large, it looks like it's still the same shape. And if I hover my mouse over a couple of these points, I see grandmam here in this little cluster. And if I move my cursor over here, then it also seems to be here. And if I take the tip over here, I get nan, nana, mum. If I take the tip over here, nan, nana, mum. So it feels more like there's been a rotation of sorts than that these words are, as far as relative distances go, really different. And considering we saw this big change where before there was correlation and then there wasn't, I would have assumed a more impactful change in this visualization. But since it seems like the relative distance hasn't changed that much, then we should wonder if there's even been an impactful change. So let's look at something else as well. What I'll do is I'll have a look at the word made and I'll just check what are the most similar words compared to the vector for made. And what I'll just do is I'll use the cosine distance one more time over here. And I'm just going to retrieve the seven most similar words to made in both of these embedding sets. And we'll just look at the difference between the two. And if I were to look at this, you know, just the nearest neighbors, so to say, it feels like there's barely a difference. These seven words are the same. Now, there has been a change. We can see that these distances are slightly different, but there's not really been a change. And to make things worse, it seems that the embedding thinks that mistress is similar to maid, and it doesn't just think that in the original embedding, but it also seems to believe that in the debiased embedding. And if I'm being especially picky, Looking at the distance here, we had 0 0.3967. And the distance over here, we had 0 0.3955. Now, I'm definitely zooming in on a detail here, but the debiased setting technically states that maid is now more similar to mistress than before. So something fishy is definitely still going on here. This is not debiasing. We certainly shouldn't suggest that all the bias has now been removed because maid and mistress should not be related. Now, I can imagine 
some data sets that might cause an algorithm to generate embeddings where mistress and maid are similar. That's probably a data issue that is being amplified in the embeddings here. But the main point I would like to make is that there are definitely still some concerns as far as fairness and bias go. Sure, we might have some cosine distances that are smaller now, but it seems that by and large, the relative distances between all of these embeddings hasn't really changed that much. So this is a proper reason for concern. It also gets a little bit worse because these are properties of word embeddings that are interesting. But let's now also think about how these word embeddings are potentially used in an industrial setting. So let's talk a little bit about how these word embeddings are often used in practice. You start out with some text and then these word embeddings can be seen as a pre-processing step. And what we get out of this pre-processing step is this vector that is numeric. And the nice thing about numeric vectors is that we can go ahead and pass them to a model. And that means that we might be able to predict something. Now, the concern that I have here is that this step, if that's biased, then odds are that this model will also be biased and that these predictions will therefore also be biased. The main concern here is that the bias will propagate. If we have it in the beginning of our pipeline, then we might be in trouble later on. So then the question is, well, what if we apply some sort of debiasing technique here? Can we then maybe also say that this here is debiased and that this here is debiased? And the idea here is, is this is an experiment that we can actually try and mimic. So what I can do is I can start by saying, well, the text that I start out with, let's make a really long list of words. And I've done the grunt work in such a way that I have male words in this list, as well as female words in this list. So you can imagine words like he, she, him, her, those sorts of words. What I can do for all of these words is I can go ahead and pre-process them. And I can do that in different ways. I could say, well, let's just take the normal embeddings, the ones that might still be biased. And what I can do is I can say, well, let's also have vectors that are supposedly debiased. Next up, I can train a model on the bias data. And this model needs to predict whether or not the embedding was a male or female word. And I can do the same thing for the debiased setting. And we could argue that if the debiasing technique that we have is really, really powerful, then this model over here should be really inaccurate. If it turns out that that model still is accurate, then we can also argue that the debiasing technique that we have maybe isn't so powerful. So I've done this in a notebook and let's talk about what results we get. So I'm about to show you the results of this experimental setup, but just to give one slight note on methodology, I've got about 400 of these male, female words, about 200 of each. And what I've done is I have shuffled all of those words together into this big list of words, such that I have 200 examples that I'm training on. And it is this other set of 209 words that I'll be testing and reporting on. So the metrics that you are about to see are not from this training set. They are from this testing set, this holdout set. That's what I'm basing my numbers on. So with that said, here are the results. These are the results of the original biased model. And we can see that it achieves an accuracy of about 90%. So I am reasonably good at predicting whether or not a word embedding is male or female. And the model, by the way, that I'm using here is just the average support vector classifier from scikit-learn. It's not a very fancy neural network and I'm not touching any of the hyperparameters. It's something that you can pip install and just use. If I were now to do the same thing in the debiased setting where I'm training a new model, then I get this. But if I were to look at the performance now, it seems that indeed, we are now less accurate. So we've made it harder for the support vector classifier to predict the gender. But to say that it's debiased, that will be way off. If this were properly debiased, I would expect a accuracy of around 50%. And we're nowhere near. So we might be able to argue that we aren't really doing that much to this data set. But if you don't think that this is convincing yet, let's do one extra thing in this experiment. What I'll do now is I'll say, 
let's not retrain this model. Let's not do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to train on the biased embedding, and then I'm going to apply here. So again, what I'm doing is I'm taking the biased data, I'm using that to train a model, and then that biased model will be used on a debiased data set. If the debiased data set is really that much different than the biased one, then I would expect that the classifier suddenly becomes super inaccurate. Unfortunately though, even this is not the case. If I take my biased model that was trained on biased data and then apply it on debiased data, even then, we are nowhere near 50%. In fact, the model seems to be able to still predict the gender reasonably accurately. So we have to conclude that the biasing technique that we have, it seems to be good at removing one very particular type of bias that we can measure using cosine distance. But that's nowhere near removing every type of bias. So you could say here that these debiasing techniques, they may just be like putting lipstick on a pig. Sure, you've made it look better, but it's still a pig. And there's a reason why I've chosen my words this way. There's a paper called Lipstick on a Pig, Debiasing Methods Cover Up Systematic Gender Biases in Word Embeddings But Do Not Remove Them. I hope I pronounced the names correctly. It's written by Hila Gonan and Joaf Goldberg, and it's definitely a paper worth reading. Not only has it contributed to my understanding of gender bias in word embeddings, but it's also helped me understand what lies in word embeddings in general. Everything that you've seen in this video has been an exercise in which I try to reproduce the results of this paper. And if you're interested, you can look in the show notes for the notebook so you can reproduce all of these results yourself as well. And I'm going to continue this topic for just an extra video because I would like to explain why this debiasing technique in general doesn't work from a slightly more mathematical perspective. And what I also hope to do is just discuss a little bit more what we are supposed to do with these word embeddings in practice. Because odds are, gender bias is going to be a problem for word embeddings for a while.